Good afternoon. Today is June the 14th, 2020. This is the Service Hero Show, 365 days of awesome. Celebrate success through service. My name is Tamara Hunter, and today we have a nominated Service Hero, one of our friends of the show, Andrea Adams Miller of the Keep Smiling Movement and the Red Carpet Connection. She actually she actually did it i have wanted to nominate this person myself <laughs> however andrea beat me to it uh we are today i am so grateful and and humbled to be honoring annie evans anybody that knows and has been around if you will the block lately in many of the circles that i am in know of Annie. Annie is a woman that has a heart as big as all outdoors that is all about serving. And and if she had her way, she would be serving seven days a week, 24 hours a day, 365 days of awesome, of course, uh, and, and, and throughout the world because she has been throughout the world. We're gonna talk about that. This woman, truly has been making a difference and she is only just started we're going to talk about that now welcome annie thank you tamara i'm really excited to be here i so am now. too well thank you thank you and i'm going to recognize that we are we're starting to get our group here together <laughs> i love it it's a sunday afternoon and we have one of our ambassadors in fact the ambassador of the chat we have helene wilson with us and actually, she's one of my chemo buddies for life. Thank you for being here with us, Helene. We have Carol Brown from Canada, one of our senior ambassadors. So grateful that you're here. It is going to be an amazing show today. And we have one of our other senior ambassadors, uh, uh, someone that's been doing so much for so many recently. Thank you, Sherry. Sherry McQueen is here just to start we're gonna let's get into this you i know of you i've known of you for a while and then i finally got to meet you at a couple of events mm -hmm. because you 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 know there's there's those events you guys that you know you have the if you will the vips and then you have the newbies you know and and when you have the quote unquote vips that are generous and kind to the newbies you never forget that and annie has has been that way and was that way with me and and that's something that when i said i wanted to nominate her and i and andrea got there first that was one of the reasons because that wow. is so big it is big and and i i want people to understand especially you know i started the show today is june the 14th there's much happening in the world. And we were just talking about that uh, before we went live. And so let's let's go there. You you're a successful businesswoman. You you've been there and done that. In fact, you've done that quite a few times. You've traveled the world. You've given to organizations to, uh, uh, if you will, like I, I, I want to say cultures um, and so many more. I know that you were very and in, very involved with like the city summit crowd and and so much. The make a wish, you know, getting the wish man movie out. What what is your driving? What drives you, Annie? Because you really are. And when I when I look at you and 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 I have I've been watching and like every single time it's like you are always about the other. That's true. I um, I don't really know where it comes from. I just really see the need and you know how much compassion really needs to be sp spread throughout the world. I've always, you know, I've, you know, I've lived in Hawaii. I was very close to the Hawaiians and, and their struggles with, you know, everything that's happened in their country. 
I lived with the Irish travelers in Ireland and, you know, and, and also speaking of today, I was like 12 when I started fighting for civil rights and Joan Baez was a mentor of mine and I actually was the youngest student at her and Iris Dan Sand Pearls Institute for the Study of Nonviolence. And um, very young, I was at all the civil rights, the huge candlestick park, the love-ins, the everywhere, everywhere I could go, the Watts riots, Rodney King, you know, so I've been passionate about people in general all of my life, and I don't see that ever fading. And, you know, having had a mentally ill, abusive mother, and then my brother also sort of got her syndrome, and they both passed. My brother especially, I think, from mental illness because he couldn't take care of himself. And so there's just so much. So as much as I can help, you know, emotional issues, I, do, I, I have been blessed with being fairly clear all my life, but I had depression and many things, and I had to retrain my brain in order to be really positive in the person that I am today. And I believe that I can help others retain and regain their control over their feelings and um, and symptoms to a degree. I am not any kind of therapist or anything. Just I know what we can do on our own to really take charge of ourselves. And I just want to help people wherever I can. And and right there, you know how significant in in everything that is happening i mean because we have a few things right now in the united states of course we are global in the way that this show does go out and the viewing audience that does watch it it does go throughout the world and and so the the fact that you have been it's not just today that you're like okay yeah i'm I, i'm interested yes okay I took a I'll course. <laughs> I, i'm i'm with it now um you know to, to to have recognized this about yourself so you know and be aware of it too and would you say that some of that could come from the fact that when you have a home life that might feel uncomfortable or a little you know that it's not as balanced if you will as as some places may be then you may be able to you know relate to others that are feeling that way i know that i was just watching a, a panel yesterday of of individuals that were trying to come together and understand where each other was you know what from their chair um, because it was about relate you know race relations and everything uh -huh. and in the end they realized that they were all kind of saying the same thing coming <laughs> from two different chairs you know and yeah. and that conversation was a very healing conversation and and the fact that you for so long have have been there the fact you know do you feel that you were attracted to that because of the way that you were brought up or was that just something that you believe was in your heart anyway being an in you know because you were sharing that you have like a, an intuitive nature and such things and i didn't realize that at, at for a long time but um so you know my my mother who was really severely mentally ill i really had to um I was out on my own. In fact, I had to run away from my mother. She chased me around the house with a butcher knife. Um, when I went back to live with her out of, she, she got out of a mental institution and I ran across, I was only 12 and I ran across the country with an older boyfriend. I um, experienced a lot in those early days, mm -hmm. but I was just thrown into so many different cultures and I just, you know, we had to learn how to fend for myself and adapt to whatever situation came up. I was never in the, I don't, I, I don't remember how many months I was gone, but it was like close to a year, I'd say eight months or so. 
And I was never once questioned about being 12 years old. I just had that look and I acted like an adult because I had been out in the world. And, you know, so just all the relationships and everything. And I do love cultures. I love people. I, mm -hmm. I just don't have a bad bone. I'm, and of course, I don't believe in any kind of violence or, or hatred or anything, but I've always, and, and this is because I'm here because of the Keep Smiling movement, but I've traveled the world. I've been very successful in many things, and I lead, I, I get off the plane with a smile, even if I'm just dead tired of jet lag and everything, because I know that's how I'm going to bring people to me and not against me. So, um, yeah, so it's it's been a quite an adventure. I have friends all over the world and I am just grateful. And I, I will be really grateful if I can really make more of a difference here in this lifetime. You know, I have no doubt that you already have. That's the thing that I, I have seen, you know, again, you know, it's interesting how when you, I would show up, I'm, I'm, I'm the one with the nonprofit that would show up, you know, if they said, okay, you know, yeah, we have a few extra chairs, come on over, you know, yes, right. whatever ever it may be, you know, so I would then be grateful and show up. And, and then you start, especially in the very beginning, I didn't know anyone, I'm building a nonprofit, but I'm at these events with all these speakers and all, you know, all of the different things that go on and and when i would see how you would be recognized for helping this group but then they start talking about and those that helped this particular one and then i mean your name was always mentioned wow and, I, I, you're you're kind of blowing me away i just feel like i'm fairly insecure I, I i have been blessed just because i've met so many incredible people who have just automatically mentored me and taken me in. And, um, you know, I guess I was able to reciprocate, but I, I get more than, you know, than I'm able to put out. So I, um, I yeah, I love that, Andrea. Um, She's so awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm just blessed. And it's just, it's just a new beginning for me. I was in corporate until just, uh, a few years ago and since I wrote my book and now I'm really focused on getting the word out there and helping as many people as I can one or one or group or just throwing information out there I know that we've been in a few groups together and you know a lot of it's about you know serving mm -hmm. rather than earning <laughs> right so, yeah. um, yeah, so I'm I'm really excited about the future. I know that you know these times. I know so many people are you know just shivering in fear and uncertainty, and we all have to deal with that. But we should know that this world has been through many many more things, and we should take this time and just grow and be productive and build on our dreams because we can still make them come true absolutely and navigate the storms of life to calm and tranquil waters you were just explaining to me which you know i i didn't know this about you i had seen on your facebook page uh, a, a boat a ship a beautiful vessel that goes in the water and it does its thing right you know um and and you were just sharing with me that 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 title which could be very metaphoric for your life yes actually is a very concrete not just an abstract type of a title it's it you actually lived on water you were sharing for like eight years right yeah, something like, yeah. 
something like I'm eight years. I'm not really good chronologically, but yes. That's okay. So something <laughs> like that, close to, yeah. we're not, we're, yeah. you know, it's not a yeah. test, guys. Don't worry. Don't get your paper and out there. You know, we're not going to, we're not going to fact check right now, but this is her life and we're telling the story and, and you're, you're adorable, Annie. <laughs> you're so much fun. Um, the, the idea though, that of going and living on like you were saying, you know, a beautiful environment. You you get your like a hotel or but it's it's you get to go anywhere in the world on the water and and you're bringing everything with you. And you started that journey around you said 1972? Yeah. Somewhere in there. Yeah. Yeah, and the boat was launched in 1972, and we shortly thereafter sailed to Hawaii and back. And I learned navigation, and there was no GPS in those days, so I became the celestial navigator and ended up logging, which we have to do on sailboats, um, 44,000 sea miles throughout the Pacific. Wow. Now, did you travel the full world in, or did you just stay in areas? Well, so um, we intended um, to do circumnavigate the world. We spent a lot of time just going up and down the coast of um, California and Washington and down to Mexico, Hawaii and back. But then we ended up, we took off from Marina del Rey and um, went down to Costa Rica and we lived in Costa Rica for a while on the boat. Uh, and the boat was, uh, I should have pulled, I should have had some pictures available, but the boat was um, anchored out, you know, for months on end in different places. And um, it would attract a lot of people. It was bright orange and, and sort of a hippie looking boat, but, um, <laughs> And then we went to Panama and we were in Panama for a long time. Uh, the boat always needed repairs and upkeep and stuff. And then we sailed over to the Marquesas, which is just on the fringe of French Polynesia. Mm -hmm. And we were there for a while. And then um, I was, we were sailing all around French Polynesia stationed in um, Tahiti but we'd go to all the different, a lot of different islands. And um, it was quite some time that I was there and that's where I left the boat. That's when you left. Okay, so yeah. you left the boat. You had been on the boat living for mm -hmm. right around eight years or so. Mm -hmm. And then you'd been off the boat for a year or so, it's, something yeah. something like that. And, and then what happened? Um, so when I, I hadn't been back to the United States, I mean, the whole time wasn't out, you know, I was in the States and then it was about four or five years that um, we were out of the country and I hadn't been back to, um, back to the United States. All my, didn't see my family. Some of my family got to sail on the boat in different periods, but, um, and, you know, so I wanted to go back, see my family and I intended to go back, but there were certain things that I just felt were really getting to be a little unsafe. My partner, the owner, the boat builder, um, you know, he liked to drink wine a lot. And we it was just this big boat that just could take a, a bunch of people out, you know, but it was a super kind of racing boat. So things were, you know, you had to be like really with it. You know, right. <laughs> like, so a few times it get get to be too much of a party boat and people would be drunk and there was one time that we, we were in Tahiti and it was really windy day and we were just woo racing and you know surfing and we we're going straight for the rocks and there's <gasps> people all over the decks and there was this one lady she had her um her legs straddling a lazy street sheet and for any of you sailors you'll know exactly what i mean but that means like the boat is healing in this boat stayed pretty flat but it's like full of wind on this one side all the lines are taut we're racing towards the rocks you gotta tack before you hit the rocks and this 
the other the lazy sheets are just gonna go wham and she would have been sliced in half ooh, ooh. and um i i was at the back of the boat on the tiller i had to run up move her off the push her off the line and kind of saved her life and it was kind of dangerous because i was steering the boat you know so i had to leave the helm and uh anyway so everything was fine and we continued to sail and she was and then we got anchored again and and my partner loved him to death everything but he's just going why did you treat her so badly i go donald i saved your life you know right and um that was kind of i just go you know what i can't and i was always the one that was like oh you know if she would just lighten up you know but I, I at the same time i just like i'm just trying to keep this thing afloat you know right so it was tough but yeah and after leaving so the survivor's guilt and everything it took me a long long time to be able to recover from that and then i realized you're really young you have the whole rest of your life you gotta get up and make it happen so the survivor's guilt is because the boat was lost right yes it was lost and your partner for life as you had said and those that were on the boat were lost with it all souls were lost all souls were lost how many souls were on the boat actually it's been really a little bit undetermined um which is kind of scary but what mm -hmm. happened was they had left tahiti after me leaving and they went to american samoa and my understanding is and they we were always you know we always needed crew and a lot of times it was friends and family and but i think it ended up that the regular crew the the builder's son didn't make it back to the boat just by air flights and stuff i didn't make it back to the boat other crew didn't make it so they had uh don had a new girlfriend um and then they had a couple other people who i don't even know who they were and i don't know if it was only two or three i mean during the time all these names and everything were going around but um uh, we looked and searched and there was a whole lot of people that because you know that the sailing that it's a wonderful um, neighborhood you know <laughs> you meet each other up thousands of miles in different directions and you know everybody was really trying to find out what happened to the boat and uh, and it usually takes seven years for people to be um, pronounced dead but a freighter it was, it was really easy floats them is what you call when little pieces are oh. sitting out there on the ocean right. so a freighter captain um you know declared that he had sighted the boat in pieces and they were all declared dead and that was i know <laughs> the other people who survived mm -hmm. Couple of them, you know, we all go through this, and it was just Donald's um, birthday uh, about a month ago. So you know, it, it, it just keeps coming up, but life goes on, and life we all have to deal with grief. And it's not my only, um, <laughs> it's not my only tragedy, but yeah, it was tough. So, and that that was back in 19 it, it it actually we lost the boat was lost at in what year and um, i don't know the exact dates i'm really just terrible at that but that's okay um 1979 1980 so i'd been on the boat you know seven eight nine years something you know right so uh, so uh, a few decades ago yeah mm -hmm. and yet and the, and the and we're going to go on but i just want i wanted people to see the fact that serving others you've been through with you growing up in your home the loss of of if you know someone that you cared about and and then then dealing with the survivor's guilt situation which 
is real. I mean, we deal with it in our nonprofit Chemo Buddies for Life because there are some times that some are saying, why, why am I still here when someone mm -hmm. else has gone, right? And you need to heal through that. And, yeah. and, and people come up with different ways of being able to heal. You, you can see, yes, of course, that you still feel it. And that's something that is a driving factor in many ways. And yet when you start serving others, when you are then saying, okay, this has happened and I've been very successful in business. I have been, you know, this and that yeah. I can, I can do this in serving and may, maybe that is, you know, cause I do know that when we see those that are serving and they start talking about it, then they can come to a place of realization like, okay, I'm okay with it. I'm realizing the reason that I'm here is I look what I'm doing. I'm helping. And that's what you are doing. You're helping. You are serving. You are definitely a service hero on multiple different fronts. Uh, and you, you were saying just recently that right now you're so busy because you are relaunching your book. You're starting another book and you really are dedicated to helping certain, uh, certain groups of individuals that you just want to, help it because right now like we were talking about today being june the 14th 2020 you know you, anybody that maybe watches this in the future and you want to check and see what's going on in the world there's it's plenty going on <laughs> there's plenty going on that you'll be you'll be educated you'll be educated i love when you were talking about your younger years and when you were educated with Joan Baez and the love-ins and those type of things. What do you think about that four letter word? What do you think about love? What do you think about its healing nature? Well, I mean, if it weren't for love, I'm sure I would be a, you know, a different person, a, a terrible person. Um, love has conquered all and can conquer all. Um, you know, and I was fortunate enough, even though my childhood was really pretty difficult and, you know, I wasn't getting the love that I needed from my mother, but I was in nature and I, I got to live in Yosemite. I got to live in Big Sur. I got to live in, you know, I'm just, so nature is my church, the, the source, the universe, God, whatever you want to call it is just magnificent. And so each time that I've been pushed down, it's just remembering that there's so much beauty and so much greatness that, you know, the, the hard things never go away, right. but they can be managed and they can be honored. Like, I feel like I've had other, in fact, I was married again and that my husband who, really love, love, love. And um, he got killed in a car accident in Hawaii. So I had to deal with that. And I've had to deal with many things, but we can all still cherish. I carry all my lost ones, you know, with me. Right. And the memories are precious. And, um, and yet I've been able to train myself to just not let it get me down. You know, yes, grieve when you really have to in the immediacy, but then just step up and put the next foot forward and make it the best. Because that's what our loved ones would want us to do. Isn't that the truth? Because we are still, quote unquote, alive. We are still here. Yes. And I believe my way of thinking that they're celebrating that. Like, mm -hmm. come on, you're still there. Live it, you know, live it for me. Yeah, yeah, live it. Yeah, exactly. Get yeah. out there and make it happen. And yep. so you are actually doing that. You are making it happen. I mean, look, you know, you're, I love that one. Oh, that's fun. You and Greg, uh, you know, uh, uh, Greg I have some Greg. Yeah, yeah, you, you know, he, he's a character, that one. Yeah. The the founder of Secret Knock, he was the executive producer for the Wishman movie. And, 
you're you're out there now you're 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 relaunching your book you've got another book you want to really help people to understand what themselves <laughs> i um you know there's so much uh there's so much angst and you know people you know, so people are constantly all the marketing mentors, you know, well, you just have to focus on one, you know, who's, who's your channel? Who do you want to help? And then I just see this huge need. Like I've had a really successful career. People don't always get in the career that really serves them well. So that's another area of where I really have that. I've really been able to help people in that area. And I want to continue to because, you know, a lot of times our lives are just kind of on remote control. You know, it's like our parents bring us up and they say, OK, let's, um, you know, go to college, get a good degree, get a job, get married, get married either before <laughs> you go to college or after, have kids. And all of a sudden, you know, some people are waking up and going, you know, well, where am I? I'm not really enjoying my life. I don't have a life. So I, I am very vested in helping people really. And I've had to reinvent myself so many times that I just comes naturally to me. It's like, hey, let's find your purpose and passion and, and what needs to change. And we'll go from there. I love it. I love it. And so... Yeah, like you were saying before, you know, and, and I actually believe anybody that's been successful in life has also, one way or another, many times, many times, you know, had that quote unquote failure. Because mm -hmm. you, to to be that kind of success, have that kind of success, you have to be willing to get out there and just do it. And it's not always pretty, it's not always perfect, and it can sometimes go whoop, or it can go whoop. And then, yeah. you know, yeah. all of the above. But the ones that are truly successful are the ones that say, okay, uh, all right, I can do it again. I can do it I'm again. I'm going to go this way now. Right, yeah. right. And learn the lessons. Yeah. And what what did I need to learn from that, right? And now I can, I can take what I've learned, what worked, what didn't work, what do I want to do different, you know, because yep. there, there's a lot of power in the what do I want to do also. Exactly, exactly. And one of the things that's big with me, one of my mantras and I kind of preach on this is we all need to build up our bounce back muscles. Oh, okay. I like that. I you know, like that. Yeah. I, I've built up mine. So I'm pretty sure that no matter, you know, if the roof falls down on me and I get out of here, I will find another way to reinvent myself and start over. Right. And, you know, during these times, it's a valuable thing to know. And I'm, I am a realtor. We mentioned that earlier. And here in California with Malibu and Ventura burning, I live in Ventura and I am from Malibu. You know, there was two sets of people. There's the people whose houses burned down who go, well, you know, I knew I lived in a fire area and I'm going to just have to, you know, rebuild or I'll move to here or whatever. A great majority, it seemed like their lives were just over. They had lived in their houses for 35 years or whatever, and they just did not have a way to move forward. Right. Um, right. And, um, so with all this stuff going on right now, I don't think the changes are going to stop anytime. No. Soon. Right. In I, fact, I, if you saw the Mayan calendar is supposed to the world's supposed to end next week. So. Well, you I know, and and I don't know if Skip's still here with us or not because he's <laughs> uh, he's uh, actually he's uh, one of my board members. And he is part indigenous. He's got a certain percentage of indigenous, and then he's very tied into the indigenous world. And you know, the a lot of the people that you were talking about before we yeah. went live, he, he's actually done documentaries on. And uh, I, I very, would love to talk to him. Yeah. Oh, uh, we'll we'll make that happen. Absolutely. Okay, yeah. We'll make that happen. And and, and because what you're talking about here 
impact your world the healing of it and 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 this is one of the things that it's not an accident and this is what i love about this show and especially oh he is here he's like okay you just had your marching orders my dear uh <laughs> yeah you get to meet annie we'll make that happen i'll introduce the two of you um that that there's there is healing available for those that want to step and say step up and say okay me i'm ready because yeah. it's yeah. true yeah. so if we're true. here right it's if we're here true. if we're here yeah. we got to realize that there's a good chance if we're living on this little blue round thing that's there in the picture right there yeah. you know right. that there we may have to do that healing thing at some point because that is called life, ha, yeah. right? <laughs> so true, so true. Right. And another, another of my little things is that it takes work. You know, we have to be, um, yes. uh, we have to be aware all the time, and you know, really check in with ourselves. And in order to really, you know, as we talk about healing and really taking charge of you know, emotional patterns or whatever's going on in your life or just making a major change in life, we have to do the work, you know, and I, I know that it took me, you know, some years to really be able to control my feelings and really to be able to Tony Robbins shift your state in a second and everything. So people be willing to do the work. I'm here if you're ready. <laughs> right, right. And, you know, and you have studied with some of the best. I mean, Tony Robbins, Jim Rohn, Greg Reed, you know, mm -hmm. all these different gurus, if you yeah. will, you know, that 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 are there and their, their wisdom can really help you to empower. You were sharing with me also and you just mentioned it right now. And I just want to go there a little bit more because I do believe that there are some people that need to hear it right now. You have, be it hereditary or be it life experience or both, because we all have a little of everything going on inside right. of us. Let's just right. be real. That depression has 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 been there you've had to deal with it you've had to look at it square in the face and you've had to get through it you've mentioned it a couple of different times and right now i do believe that and we had on this show a couple of days ago uh someone that is is working in the medical area and then she's kind of going into more of a alternative adjunctive type of a modality and going forward and saying that right now, today, there are so many people that maybe a month ago, six months ago, would have been okay, but uh, because of circumstances, right. they are now drawing to alcohol or drugs or becoming addictive of some type. There are some that their anger is getting them. Some are getting depressed. Some There's so many different things that are starting to happen, yet, it might be somewhat of a you know they're at that crossroads still they they're maybe yeah. not deep into it what do you have to say to those people or even the people that are saying i've been there and done that now for a while you haven't got anything you can share with me that is going to make me don't make ever say change. that there you go there's something that can always make a difference and we should always be learning we should always be checking in with ourselves. So, I mean, this has been a really interesting time for me because, um, you know, I'm older and, um, you know, a little skeptical about the way everybody's going out there in total denial of this virus going around, even though a lot of people have died and, um, and I'm a target age group. And so, you know, I see myself, I mean, I haven't been in depression for really many, 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 many years, but um, you always have to check in with yourself. You know, where is this going? You know, are the walls closing in on me? No, they're not. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it's, it's really important that, 
you know, all I can say to people out there is to really keep your eyes on your future and believe in it and your goals and do whatever you can. If this is a time where you're not working, that's an excellent time to possibly totally reinvent yourself as I've done several times. Or, you know, that project that's going to help your business in the future or some change, you know, we're going to have to adapt. Things are changing. You know, I'm, you know, I'm very, I'm way too into, um, <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm way into really trying to keep up with um, tech and, and everything. And now it's like this whole reinventing ourselves, you know, and, and all this Zoom and all these technology, you know, so there's so much that we can expand on and we just need to really try and, and, and work forward. So what are you? What does your work forward look like now? I, so you, because like you're really, I mean you're really busy right now. I have a feeling you probably are always busy, no matter what, right? You know, I tend, <laughs> I tend to take a lot on. It's you know, and even as I tell myself, you know, you could be retired and out on the beach, and you know. And, <laughs> Let's get the same. Learn how to play the banjo. <laughs> I, have, I have two ukuleles here, but they're just sitting there. Unfortunately, um, been trying to. <laughs> I've, I've been around a lot of musicians. Well, okay, let me just tell you this. This guy is—he's a, a musician also, and okay. he knows how to do that kind of stuff. So when you connect, you'll have to talk about that. Okay, okay. cool. All right, there you go. Um, <laughs> But anyway, we can all um, find a new path and, you know, just just think about what do you want? Dream big. I'm, I'm still dreaming, you know, and what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying because this is really new and it's a lot. I'm, you know, totally doing the books, every bit of writing, every bit of editing you know, courses, workshops, all these things that I have planned and to, you know, do the nonprofit in the name of my brother for mental illness and all. He was really brilliant. He had so many ideas. I want to see some of his ideas come true. And so now I'm focusing on just building a, a, a platform that I can work off that it's not all me. Right. <laughs> But that <laughs> I'm I'm in voting for that one because oh my goodness yeah we were we yeah. were comparing that one too you know I was like when do you I I was kind of asking you okay because you do the international thing and just recently I've been like connecting with all these people internationally and then I have all the daytime stuff and I'm yeah. like when does anybody sleep that is doing yeah. international time zones well, because easy to get lost in no sleep yeah it, it is and actually so i was an international supply chain director for actually almost two decades and so i i was living in every time zone there is on earth basically and you you learn you know i would because i was dealing with asia a lot in in, in the in manufacturing and everything so in order to save a whole day or even two days sometimes, you know, to be in their time, mm -hmm. and it takes a lot of organization to go, okay, I'm going to check in with all these people here this time, and so then I'm going to go back to sleep for two hours, and then I'm going to check in with these people. The two-hour thing. I know that one lately. <laughs> but, but um, I did realize I was running a little bit ragged by the time yeah. I you know, but I miss it. You, you know, know, I, I, you know, totally I just draw this to myself. It's like, oh, I can fit this in. You know, everybody's mm -hmm. telling me and not traveling now for a couple months because travel is in my blood. Let me tell you, I just, you know, let me get on a plane and uh, go to a way different time zone. I've been so lucky to be in so many places, but I, I miss it. I really do. So hopefully it will open up again. It will. It will. Because, you know, it, it's like you were saying that all things will end up at some point in time. You know, we just have to wait. And I think you, 
I don't remember if we said that live or before we went live, but we were talking and you were saying, you know, just, we have to, we'll get through this. We right. will get through, we will this. Get through and this. And that's, that's the message that I really do believe that you are sharing today because of being there, doing this, you have been there. You have been very interested in what's happening here in the States since you were a child. Globally, you're very interested. You have worked the globe. You have traveled the globe one way or another. Yep. And and so now you are taking your experience. You're taking also the passion that for your brother and then what it is that he wanted to do. You're now packaging all of this together and getting prepared to take that out to you're going to be relaunching the one book you have another book that you're going to be launching mm -hmm. and then you have courses involved too which ones are the courses involved with well the courses are um generally it's all it all boils down to the same different okay. purposes and slightly different avenues but really the core is the same. And so it's not that extravagant. Extravagant is not the right word, but you know what I mean? It's not that so overwhelming. It's, right. it's not that complicated. It's not that yeah. complicated. It's it's you're keeping yeah. it pretty simple in the fact that you're boiling it down to yeah. I mean, truthfully. I can see why anybody would want to be learning with you because you're real, you're down to nature. You know, you're, you like you said, you love nature. You're down right. to earth. You you are the real deal. You have, you've taken businesses that were in, you know, a, a single digit million dollars and then yeah. took it into way into the, you know, double and triple digits million dollars. Yeah. And you've, you've, you know how to, to do the steps to have success you've done it a number of times you've worked in this environment corporate you've worked in the the entrepreneurial environment real estate you are have served in philanthropic areas yes <laughs> you know and and had fun doing it too I absolutely mean, in, in fact that is um you know i never chose money over adventure and something that was going to feed me um, you know, fortunately, I was able to make money, but I always chose, you know, I could have chosen money and been on a whole different place, but I chose and that's what really fed me and really, um, you know, I'm proud of everything that I've done and contributed to. And uh, that's what I think that, you know, for so many people, wow, you really pulled up some pictures. Um, I think for so many people, you know, we just need to realize that we can uh, do all this stuff and, you know, embrace it, but we have to reach for it. You know, it's like if you're just sitting there and you go, why am I doing this? Well, really ask yourself that question. Why are you doing this? Is it feeding you? Is it something that you're feeling like, you know, whether whatever kind of contribution it is, you know, I just feel like contribution is so important and it really empowers us to do better things and new things. And so, um, yeah, I don't know what else to you know, say. I, well, you know, I'm just pulling these up here. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, let me bring one down uh, because, I mean, here, I mean, I want people to understand you've had you've had opportunities to not only travel, but you've had opportunities to be around crown princes, to be around top designers, to be in this group and to be in that group. And yet, and you are who you are. You show up as Annie. You don't show up as as Samantha or you know, someone else. You know, you show up as you are because and that's one of the things that I absolutely also treasure about you in that you you're real, you're real. And we need real people right now saying, OK, this is enough is enough, guys. You know, let's 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 get this back to the place where we need it to be. We need it to be about, 
you know, love and peace and harmony. Let's 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 just stop the stuff that's destroying things and let's 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 find ways to to heal together. Be good with the fact that we're here today. We woke yeah. up. Let's do something with yeah. it. We, right? we woke up. Woo! Woo! Party. I know. We're I got to wake up one more day for a camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, and and you do, you do, you go party. You have fun, mm -hmm. and you are oh, making a sure. difference. You have passion, and you have purpose. You have drive, and and you have stories to share. I have lots of stories to share. Yeah. I think I was telling you, like, I'm working with James Dentley, another hero mentor oh, yeah. of mine. Oh, yeah. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I never wanted to speak in front of people. So he's like, you know, he and Les Brown can fight it off for who's the better. But so he's going, you know, you really have to outline your life so that you can be really clear and tell it like a movie. So I've been working for two days. I'm going, which stories won't I tell or how am I going to, you know, get that movie going with trying to get as much into I, I have so many stories. It's ridiculous. You know, and we were talking about this, too. And, and I, I'll, I'll tell you what what I have been some of the mentors that have worked with me because I have multiple different chapters too. And yeah. for the longest time I compartmentalized them. And I think a lot of people can understand that anybody that's had a life and has been out there living it can relate to this right now. And, and, and again, you'll be meeting, you'll be talking with one of the storytellers, uh, Skip, that's what he's known for is telling stories through documentaries. And, and yet, you know, it's like, you can have different stories for different situations. It, it, for sure. And no, I mean, there's no question. And, and fortunately, like I was talking about my intuition and how I really try. And, you know, one of the things is that as I develop my, um, you know, I, I, I'm guaranteeing that if I meet a person on an initial consultation and if I don't hit one core aspect of their true inside, no charge, no nothing, because I know that I have so much inside that will just be drawn to what that person needs. So I, you know, I feel really blessed with that. It's I'm only, you know, it's only getting to, it's like, Annie, wake up, you can do this. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> well, let me just tell you this. I mean, we've got so many powerful people on this right now. I, I'm seeing that are here. We've got Rosie. Grateful you're here. Uh, Rosie Aiello. She is amazing. Southern California. You know, I'm, I'm so excited to see all these people. I'm. And Andrea. So Andrea is saying here, you are a strong, wonderful person, Annie. I, I agree with you so much, Andrea. And, and Helene is saying we can't achieve anything while we believe in ourselves and that's and right. that, that is huge and we, we need to start there we really need to love and believe in ourselves we are here for a purpose uh -huh. and we just need to find what that is and execute it absolutely and yes you do yes you do you know yes you do you have it you have it in you to oh my god to take care of things. And so I am going to drop myself down from the line for a moment. I'm going to allow you to have a moment to kind of like leave a nugget, something of inspiration, so whatever you're feeling inspired to share before we end the show, then I'll come back up and then we'll, we'll finish it out. But I'm going to give you a moment with everybody. Okay. Sure. I mean, I'm happy to answer anybody's questions or I'll just riff on, let's see what comes up into my head. But um, I think that now it's really about, you know, I know that when I was living at sea and, you know, these huge storms would come up, you know, one of the very beginning ways that I started to rechannel myself and get out of depression and, and really become a, a positive, productive person was through David K. Reynolds' um, constructive living. And he mixed Eastern, which I'm very into Eastern medicine and philosophies and everything, with Western 
and he was always dealing with people with emotional you know traumas and and um so when i had this huge chip on my shoulder when i was in my just around 20s and i um early 20s <laughs> And I just, you know, I realized like, you know, I really want to be somebody, but I had this edge and I could finally started seeing people reacting to me was like, oh, you know, that's not comfortable for me. And finally I took it in and I go, oh my God, in order for me to be really powerful and productive, I'm going to have to completely change my whole attitude. And through his little book and just a whole lot of work, as I was mentioning earlier, um, you have to do the work. But it's so simple to create, you know, to be able to set our hard feelings aside, starting with only a couple minutes. You know, if you're in a place where you're really down and out and everything, just a couple minutes, go hug a tree or go dance or go do something, go to the beach and take a walk and then do something productive. And for me, it was literally wash the dishes and get out of bed and wash the dishes. And I built on that to where now, I mean, I get angry at traffic. I get angry at things that are just annoying and frustrating and a lot of things in this world right now are. But I, I do not get angry. I am almost always really positive. Um, just don't drive real slow in front of me. No, I'm just kidding. Um, and we can all really change our lives. And then use that focus as it develops, as you're really influencing your subconscious, which is really ruling our lives. A lot of people don't realize how much it is. But as you put positive and eliminate the limiting beliefs, you will suddenly have powers that you never imagined. And then you can really look at yourself and go, you know what, I really want to create what I want. Well, what is that? Because some of us don't even look at it. You know, so really dive deep. And that's what I, I, I'm so excited about the tools that I've used for years that anybody can use and really dig into themselves. And we have so much opportunity to serve. And there are a lot of, you know, you might be down, you might not have your paycheck. You might be worried about paying your rent or your mortgage and everything. And that's for all of us. But we, there are a lot of opportunities out there, but we need, you know, without action, nothing's going to happen. So really take this time and really decide and, you know, how are you going to step forward? And maybe you're just going to take a break and see what happens and that's okay too, but do it very consciously and find your purpose and live your passion. I love it. I love it. In fact, you know, you, you really motivated everybody and, and Skip, that's unstoppable. I love that image. I just changed it. Uh, yes, totally grateful for you, Annie. Look forward to visiting more. And Andrea is saying, so true. And Helene is like, amen, Annie. <laughs> Oh, and Andrea well. saying, went food shopping with my daughter today. So grateful for that time with her. That's you know, awesome. and and I, I really love the fact that you gave permission to celebrate the fact that you wash dishes and that is something moving forward because sometimes people make it so big and when yeah. you're at that point in, yeah. in your existence that I you know that wow. Just getting yeah. out of bed is big for someone right that, now. That is a key thing, you know. I mean, when I was lying in, in bed depressed, um, you know, it was because I w wanted to do big things. Right, right, I, right. I, I, I didn't get out of my own way. And right. so, so the, you know, couple minutes of setting it all aside and going and washing the dishes and going, oh, doesn't that feel good? <laughs> you know, uh, I'm not the best housekeeper. <laughs> um, 
to this day. But, you know, I mean, it doesn't take that much. It just takes consistency and it just takes a true dedicated effort. And little by little, you will find, and, you know, as honestly, as I was washing the dishes, as I was building on this whole, you know, coming out, so to speak, the ideas as I'm literally scrubbing the dishes were just popping into my head to where I had to set the dishes down and go, yeah, you know, go take action. So yeah, as as Greg says, you know, every idea is is a thought until you take action. So right, so true. right, it's not a direct Absolutely. quote. Well, it, the, 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 the feel of it, we got the feel yeah. of it, you know? Yeah. And so now you can receive all you are seeking to get in big things in life. Go for it, go for it, love it, I love it. Well, you okay. know, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, I've just loved this time with you. This has been really precious to me. Well, thank and you. And I look forward to hearing more of your story. I'll have to have you on my podcast. <laughs> oh, well, I accept already. I love it. I love it. You know, in fact, this has been a treat, a treat for all of us. Because okay. in truth, when when people that have a good heart are really serving others, it comes out and you are and your heart has shown up today and served so many people today and will continue to serve going forward and so as you. you're so welcome thank you <laughs> thank you for coming on so as we close today june the 14th 2020 the service hero show third 365 days of awesome celebrate success through service annie Hi. evans Annie Evans, you are a service hero. We have determined that completely. We have made the case. We know for a fact that you have been serving many for your whole entire life. And it started even when you started serving yourself in situations that were tough when you were a child. You continued and you wanted to serve others. In fact, going and seeking those that were making a difference during a certain time in your life when you were young. And it just continued and continued to today. And continues. And it's only just <laughs> begun because what you are doing now is so significant and it's so needed. And I am so humbled and grateful to have been able to share this moment and time and share your stories with all of us. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, everybody. I, I, just, I just feel all of your goodness and uh it will carry me forward well thank you and yours too and all of you that are from our organization of the chemo buddies for life in our closed group tonight it's sunday so that means one thing it's game night <laughs> you never know how it's going to go but we know it's going to be old-fashioned fun so come on into the group and if you haven't joined it and if you feel as though you're feeling isolated and alone and you want to ease the suffering of that and have some fun, humor, hope, heart, hugs, and a lot of love, come Chemo Buddies for Life, the community into the closed group. You'll be accepted and you'll enjoy yourself. Have some fun and possibly even a few giggles. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.